I've been talking in hypotheticals. I've been talking in potential. I've been talking in possibility. Now it's time to discuss the three things we know right now about this Arizona Cardinals team. Let's discuss. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at Locked On AZ Cards. Uh, follow the podcast at the same place. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals, hit that subscribe button. Turn notifications on so you can see me spew things out of my big dumb face. If you'd like to go leave a review wherever reviews are possible, Apple Play or uh, Apple Podcasts, etc., I'd appreciate it. But you know, I'm just happy that you're here. Uh, Every day, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being around. If this is your first listen to Lockdown Cardinals, thank you. Maybe make tomorrow your second listen. So, <laughs> over the summer or over the off season, and I was like, listen, man, anybody that wants to talk about something specific, send me a DM on Twitter. Okay, now it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm in the works of having a way where I can interact with you a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's going to be through email or um, another avenue, but I always like hearing people's thoughts on what I'm talking about, not just what I'm saying, but what I'm talking about if I'm overlooking something. Because, I mean, I've got a list forever of things to talk about. It's football. You know, I could talk football for much longer than 30 minutes a day. So I try to be as well-rounded as possible, talk about as many angles as possible, and, you know, make you think as a byproduct instead of just spewing vanilla boring stuff that you may hear from different outlets. And I pride myself on not being uh, clickbaity. I believe every single thing that I say, there's no, if you want to have any sort of merit or respect or, you know, dependability, it's got to be authentic and original. I'm not just spewing, you know, brewing things up just to piss people off. I believe everything that I say. So I got a comment, um, and I told this person that I would be doing a show today based on this interaction I had with him, Bob Connor at Bob Connor seven three nine two. A comment on Twitter or on uh, on uh, YouTube. He said, "Why is it necessary to talk about?" things when it's when it's all hypothetical he was referring to my draft conversations and i said you inspired the next show is what i said to him and i i mean that and bob i mean that and you're going to understand what i mean when i say it here when talking about the draft traditionally for the cardinals at least over the last handful of years it's been this is what they should do what is steve kind going to do this is what they should do Let's hope they make the, make the right decision. Well, they don't have draft picks because they traded for players. They don't have this because of this. And now I think that I fell into a selfish sense of excitement because there's so many little wrinkles to what could happen in this draft. Far more than what we've experienced I mean, since last year, I guess, but in Monty Austin Forts, you know, the ecosystem that is being built here, it's a very new feeling, a very new phenomenon, a very new and incredibly untapped storyline that the last regime didn't yield. So I think that this is just a bunch of pent up wanting to have this conversation, wanting the Cardinals to be this team that has more than one option and where they'll win more than likely both ways. But I've done you a disservice. And you can thank Bob Connor for bringing this out. I thank you. I haven't talked nearly enough about what we do know. What are the surefire, or as close to surefire as anything can be in any business, 
what are the surefire things we know about the Arizona Cardinals as the draft approaches? What do we know? Going into last season, this would have been a three-second podcast because we knew nothing. Nothing. When is Kyler Murray coming back? Who's going to be quarterback? What's the offense going to look like? What's the defense going to look like? Is Jonathan Gannon head coach and Monty Osford draft well? We didn't know anything. There are three things that we know now. As close to absolute as possible, namely and from the direction of the front office of the Arizona Cardinals. And I'll explain, especially for this first one. One thing that we do know is that Monty Osford and Jonathan Gannon at all see Kyler Murray as their quarterback for the future. In Sharpie. Not in pencil that can be erased. He is the franchise guy. And this is something that was up in the air. TBD. You can always use the new GM coming in and say, oh, that's not my guy. That's what people say. And I think that's stupid a lot of times because... If the player is good, usually inherently will turn into the GM's guy and the head coach's guy, unless he's, you know, terrible teammate or, you know, whatever it is. By all accounts and by every single breath out of both Monty Osifort and Jonathan Gannon's mouths since they took their current positions has been Kyler Murray is the guy. Unwavering. And I think that speaks volumes in a couple different ways. And, you know, listen, there's going to be people who don't think Kyler Murray is good enough. Oh, his contract is so big, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. That's not what this conversation is about. We can discuss that during the offseason when, you know, there's going to be less to talk about. I think that those people are wrong. But having a unified front that's not fugazi, that's not fake, that's not, you know, are they telling people the truth? And listen, the last regime, including Michael Bidwell, was notorious for spreading, leaking false reports about things. Just the dumbest, just non-rooted and rational thought way of going about things. They try to outsmart people. It's the, it was the weirdest thing. Monty Austin Fort, Jonathan Gannon came in, introductory press conference, said, Kyler Murray's the guy. Not very often does a team that's rebuilding have their franchise quarterback. One of the things Jonathan Gannon said during his introductory press conference. And when Kyler Murray came back, Rusty early on showed flashes late, namely against Philly, but I mean, the defense was terrible. Doesn't matter. He still showed Kyler Murray's, you know, back off that, off that terrible injury. Everybody's in lockstep. He's the guy. And I feel like, I don't normally, so I, I normally adhere to the, you can't compare the Cardinals really to any other organization just because this path is no other, you can't, it's not, it's not like, what is it? It's a comparison is the, is the thief of joy. That's kind of where we're at here witnessing the Cardinals. It's like, you can't look at the Texans. Like I talked about on Monday, you can't look at other organizations and be like, oh, you know what? The Cardinals are, are behind. They're exactly where they're supposed to be. They're exactly where they're supposed to be with this rebuild. And having Kyler Murray, that's he's their guy. That's a positive. And that's something we know from the minds of Monty Osford and Jonathan Gannon. They've had chances to not commit. Myriad chances to not commit in blood like they have to, uh, you know, in regard to Kyler Murray. And they and they haven't. They've committed. Kyler Murray's the guy. And they like each other. And there's no bickering, even though the Cardinals lost a whole bunch of games last year. You really find out about the relationship between coach and player when things are going poorly. We found out pretty quickly what that was like between Cliff and Kyler. And I think Jonathan Gannon's more of an adult in the room. He's respected around the NFL as a coordinator and now as a coach. Monty Osford's got the rings. Everybody is coming from a place where Kyler Murray is the guy 
And Jonathan Gannon is the coach to get the most out of the guy, including Drew Petzing as well, naturally. So having that is something we know about the Arizona Cardinals. And that is a damn good thing to know, especially with all of the uncertainty around the quarterback position for half of the NFL. And that is exciting. And it's a great cornerstone for whatever's next for the Cardinals. What's the next thing that we know about the Arizona Cardinals? I'll discuss it next as we roll on here. Alex Lancey, Locked On Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. And right now, New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 without the hiccup, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. The craziest part, like the playing tournament, is going to be nutso for the NBA. In the Western Conference, namely. Warriors, Lakers, New Orleans, Sacramento. Only two we're going to get in. Give me a break. It's going to be awesome. So again, go to Vandal.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Fandle, America's number one sports book. I was saying locked on Cardinals. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Um, uh, thanks again. Uh, Bob Connor, who kind of shook me out of my <sighs> got to talk about the draft every day. And we do, but I think that having kind of a, a respite, I think that's the word, a reprieve from that for a full show is necessary. And I will tell you tomorrow, the show I'm going to do will be titled Three Things We Don't Know about the Arizona Cardinals. It's not going to be a hypothetical. It's going to be based upon the roster structure is currently constructed, the 2023 season, and the performance, not only future pacing, but just from last year regarding the roster. I will not be mentioning the draft at all. And I think this exercise as another two-part miniseries here would do a nice hard reset as we go overdrive to the draft. I'll be having more guests on next week, you know, um, I, I've only unveiled, you know, a, a small portion of my people who are smarter than me Rolodex that I've been waiting on. I put it, as you noticed last year, didn't have a whole lot of guests. I think it was, I wanted to wait for the right time. And I think these next couple weeks going to be the right time. So, um, yeah. And again, if, if you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments. I will have most likely an email ready for you to email um, with questions, comments, anything. I, this is your show. And I'm just, again, the, the big dumb face that uh, that spews things. You know, every day is unite. Okay. <laughs> the first thing that we know about the Arizona Cardinals, as far as Monty Osford and Jonathan Gannon are concerned, Kyler Murray is QB1. He's the guy. This isn't a draft a quarterback in the fourth round and see if Kyler Murray's the guy because of the balloon contract. Because, say it with me, everybody, this contract after this year will look like a steal compared to all the other contracts that everybody's getting. Balloon salary cap, the Cardinals having a whole bunch of cheese next offseason, there's almost nobody, aside from Rookie Seal contracts, under contract after this year, aside from Kyler Murray. They're going to have so much money, it's not going to matter. The percentage of cap will not be impactful to the point where they can't build this roster with talent. So, Kyler Murray being the guy, it being a, you know, team-friendly contract seemingly after this year, especially compared to other contracts that are going to be signed by opposing, by other, other quarterbacks, that is a good thing that we know, again, percentages-wise, by all accounts, through Monty Osford and Jonathan Gannon's eyes. Number two. And this is where it gets a little bit more future pacing, but that's kind of where we are because of the hard reset. 
after the 2023 season, after the 2022 season. The Cardinals, this is another thing that we know. The Cardinals are very young at very important positions. They're very young, very incomplete at important positions. And that's something that, while circumstantial right now as I record this podcast, could be an incredible thing and it could be an incomplete thing. And we'll find that out when the roster is completely formed by week one of the 2024 season. Very, very young. Incredibly young. Take away, you know, James Conner. Um, Buda Baker is not 30. Jalen Thompson is not 30. Like, the Cardinals don't have impactful guys who are 30 or older. And that's wild. And I know 30 is really, quote unquote, really old in the NFL. So you're looking at like 26, 27, 28, depending on position and running back, uh, pass rusher, guys like that. They are so young. And if you look at the 2023 season specifically, we saw flashes of, oh, baby. If you get more out of that from that player, that player will be an impact next year. We saw flashes from B.J. Ojalar. We saw small, quick flashes from Garrett Williams, who was hurt, you know, the majority of the season last year. We saw real flashes, and I know, and I'll give you another shout-out. Kevin McKenna and I, whoo, we're like oil and water who are best friends in the comments. (laughs) Um, He's very quick to point out that Michael Wilson um, had a couple – flash games and that was hurt or non-factor for the remaining of the games and for every day it's like if you've you know if, if you listen to, you know majority of the days or you know a handful of times a month i always go back to this and i think it's important to bring back up whenever we have these conversations where it's not just look at the numbers and that's the performance and they're good because the numbers are good or they're bad because the numbers are bad for rookies in a year like last year with Joshua Dobbs starting a a large chunk of the season and the defense having no talent and the offense trying to put together a new offense, Drew Petsing without Kyler Murray. We didn't see any really, we didn't see any, Oh no, he's not ready moments from any of the rookies. Maybe Cottrell Clark, when he was thrust into action because Garrett Williams was hurt, Marco Wilson was terrible, and, you know, they didn't have any other corners. But we didn't see any of the daunted, oh, no, they drafted him too high moments. Maybe even if there were one or two, you know, it's more than not, by a landslide, in my humblest of opinions. The game wasn't too fast for any of them, namely Paris Johnson Jr., uh, Garrett Williams, B.J. Ojolari, and Michael Wilson. So bottom line, the Arizona Cardinals are very young at very key positions. They have an incomplete report card at those positions. And... If replicated and expounded upon the performance from last year, the guys going into their second year in Paris Johnson, B.J. Ojalara, Garrett Williams, and Michael Wilson have the ability to make massive impacts on a team that is trying to get back to relevancy as quickly as possible. And it's going to be bleeping sweet to watch. Alex Lancey locked on Cardinals. Um, We know. Kyler Murray's QB1. We know this team is extremely young. And there's one other thing that we know that is foreign and has been foreign to this organization for a long time. I'll discuss that final thing next as we wrap up here. Locked on Cardinals, your team. I don't know why I whispered that. I'll never do it again, I promise. I don't know why I did that. Trying to shake it up a little bit. Alex Clancy, Locked On Cardinals. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button. Um, Every day, thanks for hanging out. You know I love you. 
you know, this is your show. Um, and um, I'm more grateful every day since taking over this in 2017, watching it blossom and grow. And now we actually get some fun things to talk about. Well, football is always fun. Positive fun things. That's even more fun. Kyler Murray is QB1. This team is extremely young and has shown promise that could turn into impactful performances in 2024, where they'll be needed. And then finally, and this is one that, you know, I, I, I've alluded to a lot. I've mentioned a lot. And it's something that we do know. The Arizona Cardinals may have never been in as good of a position as they are now to build a young core for the future. They have 11 draft picks in 2024. They have all, almost all, their draft picks in 2025 as of now. And they were going to have top five cap space after this season. That's what a hard reset looks like. It was gross last year, but it was a lot more fun than people expected, than I expected. The proof of concept is there. And again, like, you know, with Jonathan Gannon and Monty, we're not crowning these guys right away. I'm not. I use the adage, so far, so good. And the so far, so good has implied odds of great. If they do the exact same thing as they did last year, with the offense, having everybody ready to play, everybody playing for each other, Kyler Murray getting better, Jonathan Gannon leading the charge, Nick Rowles and Drew Petson doing their thing, again, with infusion of talent, with another year, a full year finally with Kyler Murray in this offense and a defense that's actually going to have some talent on it. Could be pretty good. And then you have the full draft class here, whether it be Marvin Harrison Jr. or otherwise. The Arizona Cardinals are in a position to have a full-blown transformation, not only in the win-loss record, not only in their status in the NFC West and the NFC altogether, but as an organization that is run with functionality and people put in positions of power where they actually do their jobs well. And that's not knocking the last regime. It's the truth. Like, it's not like an opinion. They've been terribly run pretty much since their inception. Sure, they made a Super Bowl. Great. They had a couple good years with Bruce Arians. Awesome. None of it has ever been sustainable. None of it. The way you have sustained success in the NFL is through the draft. And the draft has been a four-letter word for the Arizona Cardinals pretty much over the last decade. So now, not only did the draft class last year perform well enough to see, oh, baby, could be great instead of, oh, no, he's a project. It's going to take three years. Zayman Collins, Isaiah Simmons, on and on and on and on and on and on and on. 11 picks this year. Kyler Murray coming back. Buda Baker, James Conner. The offensive line is better than it's been in the last five, seven years on paper. Full bevy of picks next year as of now. And all the money to spend next year. That's what you call set up for sustained success. They've got to execute it, of course. They've got to win games this year, absolutely. Kyler Murray's got to continue to get better, of course. Second year guys need to play like, you know, expounding upon the compound interest from last year to this year. Of course, all of it needs to happen. But all... GMs can do is set the team up with the tools necessary to succeed. And Monty Austin for in less than two years 
has done it. Now they just got to go. So while there are a lot of hypotheticals this time of year, situations, possibilities, if this, then this, choices with what to do it for, I agree. It's all hypothetical. I hope that you will, once this podcast ends in the next minute, you'll leave with kind of a cleansing, at least knowing three things that we do know about the Arizona Cardinals right now as the draft approaches. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you tomorrow.